بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما اتاكم الرسول فخذوه وما نهاكم عنه فانتهوا صدق الله العظيم سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي دروسي قلنا respected brothers respected elders mothers and sisters listening at home سيدنا عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله تعالى عنه arrival in Jerusalem is considered to be one of the most important events in the annals of Islamic history. Muslims were so happy to see the blessed face of Sayyidina Amr ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an that spontaneously from the mouths of every mujahid the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came out. Some were saying Allahu Akbar and some were saying, La ilaha illallah wa Allahu Akbar. The chanting of the takbir was so loud <coughs> that it echoed on the walls of Jerusalem, even on the gates, so much so that the high priest had to send someone to make an inquiry as to why the Muslims were so excited. And when the guards looked above from the towers where the gates were some of the Muslimin Mujahideen had informed the guards that the Muslims are happy today and expressing their joy and happiness because the commander of the Muslimin has arrived from Madinatul Munawwara to Jerusalem this information then was given to the high priest it is said that the high priest kept quiet he didn't initiate anything no meeting with Hazrat Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an. ulama have mentioned perhaps it was a shock for him he did not expect Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an to vacate Darul Khilafah the capital Madinatul Munawwara and to risk and to come to Jerusalem and many of the cities were not even in the full control of the Muslims, so it was a great risk. He did not understand the character of Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala. He was not like the other heads of state who would have bodyguards and for them security guards and the full security was important to travel even for a mile. In the case of Umar ibn al-Khattab, everything was very very simple it was only tawakkul upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he left Madinatul Munawwara putting Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala an in charge and he comes according to one narration alone with his slave sharing one camel subhanallah and what does Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an do the first thing what he does Hazrat Abu Ubaidah had made all the re- relevant preparation a tent was pitched up for him the ulama have mentioned that tent was made from camel hair camel hair Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an entered that tent with the rest of the Muslim generals Hazrat Abu Ubaidah, Hazrat Khalid Hazrat Yazid and the rest of the Muslim commanders that were there and they met him after that, Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an came out and he greeted every single mujahid. He embraced every single one of them. Subhanallah. And gave them the basharat of fighting as a mujahid. 
this was a great boost for the Muslimin, an impetus for them to fight and to conquer the other cities that were that had not surrendered to the Muslims. Just to see the face of Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an was enough for them. This is what Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala an had said. That if you go and when they see you, that would be better, O Amir. And this is why Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an was there. As is the sunnah of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That those who were the khulafa of Rasulullah, it was important for them to lead everyone in the salah. So Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab as he came, Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah gave the position to Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an, and he was the imam, the rest were the muqtadis. The first day nothing had happened. Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab wanted to know exactly what was happening in Syria, who the Amirs were, what they were doing, and just exchange of information, giving them information of what was happening in Medina al Munawwara. The next day after Fajr Salah, again a very brief khutbah given by Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an, and he said to Abu Ubaidah that later on when the sun rises above our heads, send someone to the gates of Jerusalem and tell them that Umar ibn al-Khattab is here as was your condition and he is here to meet the high priest. As Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah radiallahu ta'ala and said to Umar ibn al-Khattab that you stay in the tent, I will send someone and I will accompany him. So a group of men went close to the gates of Jerusalem the guards that were there gave information to the high priest that the Muslims wish to speak to you. As was their tradition, the priest, an old man, stood up, put on his uh, special monk garb that they would put on the priests and the bishops that were there. It was their tradition that when the high priest would stand in front of him would be a group of people also and they would have this cross held up high. So that was to mark the honor of that high priest. This was usually done only on festival periods. But because this was an important event, this was instructions given by the high priest. With him was also the governor of Jerusalem, whose name in the books of uh, Tariq history is mentioned as Batlik, Batlik, that was his name. So Batlik was the governor. Before the high priest could get up to the tower to see Hazrat Abu Ubaidah, he privately met the high priest and said to him that if now the Muslims don't have that Umar who is described in the scriptures and that you are the most learned one here, and you say that if you see him, you will recognize him. If this time, if it is not Umar ibn al-Khattab, and if it is someone else, as in the last session, as I had explained, they put Hazrat Khalid bin Walid forward, and they said, this is Umar ibn al-Khattab. If it is not Umar ibn al-Khattab, then we have no choice but to fight the Muslims. And we will open the gates, it will be victory for the Muslims or it will be victory for the Christians in Jerusalem. So we have no choice. This was extra pressure put onto the high priest. And he said, yes. If I see Umar ibn al-Khattab, I will recognize him. Subhanallah. And there is no time, maybe inshallah in the next session, we will compare the verses of the Quran and what is in the Torah and in the Injil. Information given to us about the companions and the place of Hijrah and all the prophecies about Huzur alayhi salatu wasalam if Allah wills inshallah in the next session Sayyidina Amr ibn al-Khattab was in his own tent and Abu Ubaidah was out there both of them the governor and the high priest got to the tower and looked at Hazrat Abu Ubaidah and the governor said to Hazrat Abu Ubaidah that we have the high priest here. Speak 
what you want to speak. And Hazrat Abu Ubaidah radiallahu ta'ala and said to him that as was the wish of your high priest that you wish not to surrender but until you see Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala we have with us Umar ibn al-Khattab his name is Umar he is the Khalifa, the successor to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we have no one who is higher in position than Umar ibn al-Khattab so we have him, he is here from Medina to al-Munawwara now the priest said to Abu Ubaidah we don't want to speak to you and we don't want to see you we have seen you bring Umar ibn al-Khattab in front of us you want me to surrender to the Muslims, you want us to pay jizya, tax we will only pay tax if we see Umar ibn al-Khattab one thing to remember about jizya, my respected brothers, jizya is not something extra enforced upon the kuffar. In an Islamic state, the Muslims have to pay zakat to the Islamic government. So it would not be fair upon the Muslims that the Muslims have to give zakat whilst the kuffar pay nothing. And at the same time, they are protected citizens. Their wealth and their lives are also protected. So to make it equal upon the Muslims and also the non-Muslims. In Islam we have something what is known as jizya. So because the Muslims have to pay zakat, the kuffar have also got to pay jizya. And this jizya also goes to the Islamic government. So it is well balanced. This is not zulm. This is freedom of religion that Islam provides. They They have that liberty, they are free to do what they want in their own zones, they can do whatever they want. But they have to pay up. And they have to give that amount to the needy, like how Muslims have to give zakat, they also have to give zakat. Muslims don't say to them that zakat is farzan, you know. Zakat is only farz upon the mu'mineen and the muslimin, but upon them it is jizya. Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an was in his tent. Hazrat Abu Ubaidah returned back and said to Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab, they want to see you, and they want to see you alone. Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala and stood up, and he said to Abu Ubaidah, I will go, and I will visit the high priest, and he can see me clearly, and decide what the scriptures talk about, and how I am described in the scriptures. Hazrat Abu Ubaidah said that, it would not be right for you to enter Jerusalem without weapons without a group of Muslim men protecting you, Mujahideen. That would not be right. We don't know what the kuffar have in mind. Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an, subhanallah, the iman that he had, smiled at Hazrat Abu Ubaidah and put his hands on the chest of Abu Ubaidah and read in front of him the verse of the Qur'an and said, قُلْ لَنْ يُصِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا هُوَ مَوْلَانَا وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Oh Abu Ubaidah, don't you know what Allah has said in the Qur'an? Only that will afflict an individual what Allah has already decreed for him. Only that will afflict a person what Allah has decreed for him. Whatever is written in your taqdeer, that will happen. The rest is all bahana, or the doctors, if they came early, if the ambulance came early, if this happened, if that happened, if this medication was given, fine, this is all asbab. But this is something that Allah had already decreed. Huwa Mawlana, and He is the one who is our protector. Wa alallahi faliyatawakkalil mu'minun. And it is important upon the believers that they have their complete reliances upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hazrat Abu Ubaidah said, whatever you wish, but my wish is that we won't have a group of Muslim mujahideen, but I will accompany you without weapons. Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an agreed to that. What were the clothes of Umar ibn al-Khattab? Simple tunic, jabba that he had worn. Patches from the different sides, from the right section, left section. Patches. And a simple cotton cap. A lot of the people say it is not sunnah to wear topi. It is not sunnah to wear a cap. But that is in, uh, the, it is sunnah. And in fact, it is recorded in the Sahih of Imam Bukhari, rahmatullah alayhi, 
and in the books of Sirah it is mentioned that Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab had a cap on, a cotton cap very simple dress code and his own camel Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab mounted on it Hazrat Abu Ubaidah behind him some of the companions said that it would be better if Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab would change his clothes and change the camel to show the power of the Muslims also and Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab said no Subhanallah Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab came close to the gates of Jerusalem and he stopped until he was exactly in the line of the high priest there the high priest was rubbing his eyes to see Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab people were excited this man who is mentioned in the scriptures who they have to surrender Jerusalem to the companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so he's rubbing his eyes scanning at Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab properly looking and making sure that he is exactly what is mentioned and described in the scriptures when he looked at Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala an subhanallah he said to Batlik that was there he is that very man who is mentioned in the scriptures immediately opened the gates of Jerusalem and let him come in Jerusalem with izza with honor Allahu Akbar no pomp, no showing off, no nothing with Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab. Simple clothes, no arrogance, no kibr. In fact, such was the condition when the gates of Jerusalem was opened up. Subhanallah. This event is written in the books of Tariq history. All the Muslim historians have recorded this. To conquer Jerusalem without the Mujahideen without swords, without fighting the gates of Jerusalem were opened up for Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala as was the case of Hazrat Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he entered into Makkah al-Mukarrama as a conqueror victorious over his enemies it is said that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam put his head down and was touching the front section of that animal the camel that was there the same incident with Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab. As he entered into Jerusalem, humility, tawazu, humility. And he was doing the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That this is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tu'til mulka man tasha wa tanzi'ul mulka min man tasha. All the time remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was Hazrat Abu Ubaidah radiallahu ta'ala an, Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an, that now entered into the city of Jerusalem and the gates were now closed. So you had only two people there. The Muslims had camped outside Jerusalem. And the two companions were inside. Two great companions, Ashare Mubashara, one the Khalifa of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And one senior Sahabi of Rasulullah. There the people came, people of Jerusalem, greeted Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala and looked at him. Now, going back to that incident of how the high priest recognized Umar ibn al-Khattab some of the scholars have mentioned that in the, in the scripture it was written that he will wear one particular jabba and on the right section and on the left section he will have patches he will have patches some said 25, some said even more so it was the patches that the high priest was looking for and the face was there he knew exactly how Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an would be. Allah gave him that face, subhanallah. So when you looked at him, you would want to surrender. Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab was there. People came to him and people were saying that we hope you will allow us freedom of religion to allow us practice of a religion. And that in the scriptures it is mentioned that you are a just ruler. Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an spoke to them and said to them if you honor your promise rest assured that we as Muslims will also honor our promise you have to pay jizya to the Muslim government and you are free you will do exactly what you are doing now you will have that independence you can do what you want and practice whatever religion you want nobody will enforce Islam upon you you have to pay us jizya 
your businesses, your properties, your places of worship, everything is protected. Your lives, your wealth, everything will be protected by the Muslims. You have to pay us jizya. So the first meeting was with the high priest and then the rest of the bishops and priests that were there. As Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an said to the high priest that this is our first meeting and amnesty was given to the people of Jerusalem. And Hz. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an very quickly, the master that he was, the intellect that Allah gave him, he said that I wish now to go back to the Muslim camp and inform them of what is happening before they, they feel insecure as to what has happened. So the gates of Jerusalem were opened up and this time they were opened up and never locked up again. Subhanallah, Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab went back and informed the rest of the Muslim commanders that the city had surrendered and now Jerusalem is in the control of the Muslims. Again, Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab was in no rush. For him, Salat was very important. At the time of Salah, everybody would get together, he would be the Imam, people would follow him. Subhanallah. The next day was Yawmul Ithnain, Monday. And he stayed in Jerusalem for many days. On a Monday, Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an marched back into Jerusalem with the rest of the Mujahideen. All the Mujahideen came into Jerusalem. When Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab entered Jerusalem, the first thing what he did, which is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was looking for the right piece of land where a masjid can be constructed or that portion of land can be reserved for the Muslims to perform their salah. So one place was selected by Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab in Jerusalem on the east section and the first thing Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab did was mark that area as a masjid and he led the people to prayer. That was the masjid and that masjid until now is known as masjid umar masjid umar Arifah. Not this mosque, alhamdulillah. <laughs> but it was known as Masjid Umar. We the, less, we the people of Leicester are very fortunate. We have Masjid Abu Bakr. I was there today. I, I performed my Juma there. My khutbah was there. We have Masjid Umar. And we have Masjid Asman, which is Markaz, isn't it? And we also have Masjid Ali, subhanallah. And we have Imam Bukhari also, the father of Hadith. Masjid Bukhari and if you follow the four khulafa and if you understand the hadith you will achieve salvation and salvation in the Arabic language is falah salvation in the Arabic language is falah so we also have Masjid falah and falah will only come if you have nur in your heart falah will only come if you have nur in your heart so we also have Masjid nur so we are blessed, aren't we? The people of Leicester. No disrespect if I have forgotten any other masjid. <laughs> Inshallah, maybe at another time we can connect all the masajid. Connect all the masajid. Subhanallah. So that Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala entered Jerusalem and the first thing allocated a spot for the masjid. It is said that when now the people saw that at namaz time all the mujahideen were there Praying Salah behind one Imam, Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab, all of them there. No weapons, amnesty is given, ceasefire. It is now in the control of the Muslims, the city of Jerusalem. You had the Romans. They couldn't bear to see this free movement by the Muslims. Ajnadin taken over, Dimashq taken over. Now Jerusalem, the Holy Land, that is taken by the Muslims. They couldn't even dream of that. It was unbearable for them. Until some of them decided that it was time to breach the truce and break the promised peace between the Muslims. And they got together. And some of them said that the best time to finish off all the Muslims is when Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab stands for his salah. All the mujahideen are there performing salah. They have no weapons. So this is the best opportunity we can come from the back, from the front. We have the weapons. And one shot we will take our revenge and the entire Muslim army will be wiped out from Syria. Arzi Quds, Baytul Maqdis from that zone. 
And they came to this man whose name is Abu Ja'dah. Abu Ja'dah. And he was a very intelligent man. He was a man who would usually be a mediator between the Muslims and also the Romans. And they said to Abu Ja'dah that, look, this is what we want. We want to betray the Muslims. We want the city back. Abu Ja'dah said to them, it is not possible for you to fight the Muslims. Not with this man, Umar ibn al-Khattab, that you see. Even in their salah, you can't defeat them. So, he said to Abu Ja'dah, there must be a way out. Abu Ja'dah was a very intelligent man. He said, the only way to fight the Muslims is by taking away from them the taqwa that is in their heart. Pollute their iman. Pollute their iman with sins. Put in front of them dunya. Put in front of them all the finery that is out there. Your gold, your silver, your silk, the silk root and all your silk that came. And everything that you have. In fact, even put your women out in front of the companions. And dress them up in a very seductive manner, in a voluptuous way. And when now the companions start to lift up their gaze and look at your women and look at your wealth, that will pollute their iman. Their imans will get weak. Once hubbu dunya, the love of dunya, gets into their hearts, then you will have an opportunity. If you fight the Muslims, you will be victorious. You will defeat them. This was the strategy. So don't fight with the Muslims right now. For they have taqwa, you won't be able to fight them. Fight them and eliminate that taqwa, that nur of iman that is there. And this is what the Romans did. They paid the women. The women were semi-nude. And especially in the area where the Muslim mujahideen would walk from. Where they would go for their salah. Everything was put out there. Gold, silver, money, wealth. And the Romans said, if any one Muslim touches your property without your permission, we will have an excuse to fight them. So even in their salah, we will have an excuse. Subhanallah, these were the mujahideen, the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hazrat Aus bin Hari says that not a single mujahid would lift up their gaze to look at the women there. Not a single mujahid. They were trained by Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala. Your islah was done just by looking at Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala. Subhanallah, you were reformed totally with taqwa. Not a single man lifted up his gaze. In fact, the ulama have written in the books of history that as they would pass from the treasures that were put out in the streets, some of the companions would say, Alhamdulillah, Allahu yabsutur rizqa liman yasha. This is the distribution of wealth. Allah gives wealth to whom He wills. And they would end that talk by saying that it is the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If the value of this dunya was equivalent to the wing of a mosquito, then Allah would not give the kuffar a single drop of water. If it was equivalent to the wing of a Mosquito, Allah would not give the kuffar a drop of water, a single drop of water. So what is this dunya? This was the condition of the companions, my respected brothers. And it was very, very difficult for them to defeat the companions. The Romans knew that they had no choice now but to surrender and to remain in the amnesty and that security provided by the Muslims. One very important event that had taken place also, uh, whilst Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an was in Jerusalem, that was uh, Hazrat Ka'ab al-Ahbar, the very famous Jewish rabbi who was there. Inshallah ta'ala, if Allah wills, we will continue with this in the next session. It is better not to... Uh, <coughs> complete this very important topic uh, with, with speed in a rush. It's better inshallah with time 
every event is explained so we understand how Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala spent his every single day and moment in Jerusalem the events that had taken place his conversation with the other rabbis and also the high priest inshallah we will continue with that in the next session wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen duru shifallah اللهم صل على سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد النبي الامي وعلى اله وسلم تسليما اللهم تقبل منا وتب علينا انك انت التواب الرحيم نستغفرك ونتوب اليك نستغفرك ونتوب اليك نستغفرك ونتوب اليك سمعنا وطانا غفرانك ربنا واليك المصير برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين